Hello TTI students and welcome to another week of computer systems and service. This week we're going to be working on installing and running the program Eclipse. It's a programming environment specifically for Java as well as JavaScript and HTML5. This week we're going to focus on Java. Now we're doing an intro to programming. So there's a PowerPoint that goes along with this that goes over some very basic programming principles. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later on. For now, we're just going to do a simple activity that's going to help you all with understanding how programming works on a very base level. All right. The first thing we need is a runtime environment. And to do that, we need to install the Java Development Kit, as you can see here on the screen. In order to do that, we must accept the licensing agreement. It's going to tell us, thank you for accepting the licensing agreement. Awesome. Next, we're going to click on the version for Windows here for the Java SDK. And that is Software Developing Kit. It's also called the JDK, Java Developing Kit, or Java Development Kit. All right. So we're going to install that. It's going to show up down here. Um, if you're using Google Chrome, you can just double click on the link and it will open it as soon as it's finished installing. The next thing that we're going to install is Eclipse. These links are found on your Learn at UW page. Pull that up here really quick as it downloads here. Um, and if you go to modules, um, all of these are listed under your modules. So you have the Java SDK standard development kit and the Eclipse IDE, which is developing environment. All right. So next we're going to install Eclipse. Now when you install Eclipse and you open up the downloader, the Java one, you should just, all of the settings are pretty much default, so you should just be able to install it right away. You want to install the JDK first, and then we install Eclipse. You need both of these to run. Now the Eclipse installer that I have you all use um, has the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. That's the one we're going to use. All right. So we're just going to have it create a desktop shortcut and do all of that. Set the terms of service and allow that to install there. Once the installer finishes, you are to launch the Java IDE through Eclipse. We'll get this nice little loading window here for Eclipse Neon Point One. Now, once Eclipse opens up, what you're going to do is you're going to create a new Java project. And we're going to call this project my first code. All right. I'm going to hit finish. And we can close out of this welcome screen here, and that will take us to our Java project here. All right. So I actually have my sample code here. Um, I'm going to copy it over. And I have a tutorial version here. So in my first code, um, I'll have this code posted on the website for you all. You're going to create a new class. The class is going to be in my first code, and we'll call it first. You can call it whatever you like, um, as long as you keep the naming um, system the same. And I'll show you why that matters here as well. So I'm going to paste my code here. Right now I have a sample code here with the sample text. Um, so what you're going to do, it's just going to say hello world. Uh, the sample text that I'll provide for you all. You're going to say hello world and you're going to say I am and type your name. Now, right now I have it named after my sample project here. But one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that this title here needs to match the title of your file name. So if I type this as first and I save it, saving these Java files will automatically compile them for you. All right. So all you have left to do is to run the program. And down here in the bottom, it's going to tell you what actually prints out. 
So this statement here, system.out.println, that is your actual code. Everything before it is setting up the environment for your code. Similar to HTML, how we have to identify the type of document, and in our header, we have to identify any CSS classes that are attached to it. So public just means that this method, sorry, this class can be seen by other classes. And this area here is called the main method in Java. Within this main method, you have an input. We're actually not gonna worry about it because it's a, it's a string array of arguments. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that right now because we actually don't need to use that string array of arguments into our main method. Using other methods, you can actually do things like loops. And with a loop, you can introduce a variable that'll actually count how many times that loop goes. So there are different ways you can use these variables, but think of it as an X in an algebra equation. So it's an unknown variable, right? Um, so we have public static void main. This is just the general um, way that we set up our main method. And this inside statement here is the actually called the method once again. And our code here says print. Now remember from Ubuntu that print isn't actually printing out things from a printer, but it's actually just printing it to the screen. All right? So there you have it. The last thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a screenshot. So you can go to snipping tool. We can take a screenshot here. And then you're gonna save that in the same folder that you have your documents there. All right. So mine, I just have a TTI current. And there we go, my first code. All right. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. All right. Have a wonderful day.